Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 512. I am your host, Roman Sanzo, and we got some news for you this week. So let's hop right into it with the first one. <clears throat> IDW Endless Summer Event Connecting Covers. Hmm, this is going to be cool. Good morning, everypony. We have some fun news out of IDW Publishing today. Do you like comic crossovers? How about Sonic the Hedgehog or Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or even, dare I say, Dungeons and Dragons? If you do, then you have to be in... Uh, then you happen to be in luck, kind of. As part of IDW publishing Endless Summer One-Shot Comic event kicking off this August, a series of connecting covers have been created by illustrator Jack Lawrence, spanning four different comic book series. Those series are Dungeons & Dragons Saturday Morning Adventure, uh, My Little Pony Generation 5, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Sonic the Hedgehog. So while it is not a full-blown comic crossover, it is a comic event of four one-shot comics with a shared team. More to the point, this is also the first time My Little Pony comic book cover has ever uh, connected with covers from different comic series. To date, only the My Little Pony and Sonic the Hedgehog covers have been revealed for this connecting cover event. Request Your Daily will keep you updated at the image as sorry, uh, image are released prior to the comic dropping on August 30th. <clears throat> All right. Anywho, uh, let's see. This this two covers are cool. We get to see. Hmm, okay, um, hmm, how about this, okay, uh, when you take a look-see at the cover, you can clearly tell that, oh, that dust of, um, yeah, th this year, this dust, uh, kicking up is because of Sonic, so yay, that's cool, but at the same time, too, we got no idea, uh, what's in between them, or what's even, uh, at the side, left and right, I mean, um, We'd love to see the other two, uh, Dungeons and Dragons and also Turtles. And a uh, funny thing, uh, we get to see that Sonic's comic is a bit expensive by $8 and Pony comic is $5. Huh. So we get the main five here and we get the IDW staples here. I don't remember much of them. I know she's a sniper. She has a tail. That's about it. But yeah, um, as for now, can't really say much because there's nothing much to go or nothing much to talk about. So this will be something cool. Uh, too bad that the comics aren't really a crossover event kind of thing. It's more of a one shot for the individual ponies or sorry, individual comics. So we'll see what Pony does. It should be fun and interesting. So let's, uh, talking about D&D, let's move on to the next news. My Little Pony role-playing game called Rulebook pre-orders now available, plus a preview. Who wrote this? Seth is the right. Uh, Riga, uh, Renegade has tossed up pre-orders for the June release of the My Little Pony role-playing uh, game called Rulebook. They've been working on, apparently, pre-orders currently given access Sorry, pre-orders currently given give access to digital PDF versions of it for all of you out there that prefer to use your tables uh, tablets at the table. I know that was me back when I played. Uh, you can pre-order this one over here. Find a preview of what's inside below. I'm curious. What's the book like? Or how much is it? Oh, $55. Hmm, okay. Uh, 
Okay. Oh. PDF version. Oh, and the PDF version is cheaper. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Anyway, let's let's read the. There's no much. All right. Let's click on this and this. Close here for a bit. <coughs> All right. Okay. There's one more that I need to cover because it's kind of a um <coughs> a then, uh, addition to it. Another preview for the My Little Pony role playing game called Rulebook uh, Chatty Trait. <coughs> the, car the cartoon horses love to talk, and one trait you can assign to the ponies you create is Chatty. It, pro uh, it provides various social bonus along with negatives. Hit down below to check it out. Alright, so <coughs> that's there. And let's head into the map first because the map we see we seen the map and technically there's nothing new to it. Uh, where's App Appaloosa, Ponyville? Yep, this is your standard map. But I'm sure if you are a dungeon master or game master, pick one. Uh, you'll find use for this. Uh, if I were to run this campaign, right? I'll set. Um, I'll put the setting in Ponyville, and then, uh, judging by the players, if they're experienced or not, uh, I'll probably guide them to some place simple. Uh, let's go to Cantalot. So we take the train, go to Cantalot. Uh, if the players are experienced and they want to try and um, <coughs> create their own stories and adventures, uh, probably they want to go to Apple Appaloosa, so take the train and whatnot. I mean, there there's a lot of interesting things that the players can do, and as the dungeon master, you are uh, responsible for your campaign. But we do see that uh, there's uh, the dragon lair down the south east. Yep, southeast. Oh, there's also the Mayan temple here. Uh, Griffinstone, Grotto River. This is kind of cool. Uh, Yank, Yakit Rage, Crystal Empire, uh, yeah, Yakistan. So the map is kind of cool, and there's a lot to play around with. But anyhow, let's go to the <clears throat> uh, first page. Creating a character. So, character creation is where your imagination meets the game's tool. Maybe you have an idea for your character and want to find an option that matches or you or you may see the rule and be inspired to take your character in a direction in a new direction as long as you end up with a character ready to play there's no wrong way to go there so i'm just uh, gonna read that, that bit i'm gonna take the look see at the character creation because um if you didn't know, I do play Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Ed, uh, and that's the only tabletop role-playing game I've played so far. I am interested in checking out Pathfinder, but I don't have I, I don't have a game master to play with, so I'm kind of blind with that one. So uh, putting that aside, uh, so all of my experiences are based on Fifth Ed of D and D. So let's see, <clears throat> creating a character. Step 1, creating concepts. Who is your pony? So, <laughs> alright. So for step 1, it's basically what do you want to do with your character? Or what what is your character? Who is he? What does he do? Or what it do and stuff? What, who are they? <laughs> and... I don't know how far this goes beyond uh, races because in D and D you have your humans, elves, half elves, dwarves, um, Goliaths, uh, and your tieflings, and many more. There, there's a, there's a lot, so there's a lot of options for you to choose there. But for ponies, um. The ones that I can remember are, you've got your ponies, and those are split into trees. You've got your earth pony, pegasi, 
and also uh, unicorns and then uh, if you want to add in alicorns they, they, they can be there if you want and if your game master allows it and then um, you, you get your uh, non-ponies uh, those can be hippogriffs uh, griffins uh, what else hippogriffs griffins uh, changelings yak and then uh, diamond dogs and uh, uh, Kirins and so on. So there, there's a lot of characters or races to choose there. But I'm guessing that uh, Renegade, Renegade was it? Renegade, right? Yeah, Renegade. Uh, I'm guessing Renegade Studios won't push everything all at once because they need to kind of well uh, create more books for the game anyway uh, so that's the character concept and so on so basically let's let's just say uh, let's create a earth pony who does a podcast and just wants to do stuff and somehow his motivation for adventuring is to get more content. Yeah, let's just say that. So that's his gig and whatnot. Step two, uh, origins, influence, and role. Choose one origins, up to three influence, and possibly hang-ups, and a role. Choose backgrounds, traits, one of each influence. Record the bonus you get from each one record. Role level as one. Ah, okay. So I'm just going to read through because um, I'm, re I'm basically I repeat self. <clears throat> uh, three, essence score. Assign 12 points across your essence score and remembering any bonus you get from influence, origins, or role. Defense. Oh. Uh, add 10 to each essence and role that as. The approved appropriate defense, toughness, evasion, willpower, and uh, cleverness. Uh, five step five skill increase the rank of any skill under each essence by the total of essence increase in the s uh, in that essence. Uh, skill ranks are two d one two uh, sorry um two d. 2D, D4, D6, D8, D10, and D12. D2 is confusing because, okay, um, these are dice. And what that means are a D20. A D20 is a 20-sided dice. D12, 12-sided dice. D10, D8, D6, D4 are just basically dice. A, a D2 is basically a coin. It's just one or two or zeros and ones so um, this one is a bit confusing for me because I don't know the system for this one so uh, I, I just yeah I mean this is very fascinating skill ranks are two, uh, uh, essence by the total score of essence increase in that essence skills are d2 and uh, all right oh, no. uh, six. describe your character at some final touches like a name and what your character looks like. You also begin the game with a pool of friendship points, one per player between you. See page 118. So that's more additional rules. So um, looking at the character creation, it's already interesting uh, because... <laughs> Um, okay, uh, let's go for this one first before I uh, show you what I want to show. So anyway, uh, my little pony, blah, 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 chatty. So this is a um, background thing. So uh, never at a loss for words. You have to say a lot about a lot of topics. Influence, skill, persuasion. Persuasion usually in the end. Uh, in the actually, uh, persuasion just makes you or gives you hmm, how do I put this? Okay, uh, in D&D &D, there are certain skill sets that you have 
uh, athletic, acrobatics, and so on. And persuasion and deception is also one of those skills. Uh, in D&D, persuasion is just, say, um, your character wants to go into a restricted area and the person says no can do and if your character has high persuasion and the right role you can technically tell the or talk to the guard saying that oh I mean uh, just between the two of us uh, let's hit I mean, you, nobody will have to know blah 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 you can just talk about talk to them and then like just try to get in and usually uh, if your persuasion is high and uh, certain skill match up you may get uh, advantages that means you get to roll two dices or uh, in D&D's case two d20s and pick the highest for the roll so if you get a net 20 you automatically passes and whatnot okay example pony mare mare oh okay cool we're starting off with her that's gonna be fun Mare Mare owns her, owes her political position as much to her politi politics as she does to her gift of the gab. Uh, perks. Character flashback. You remember something interesting someone did, uh, someone said once. Three times per day you can, uh, you can sub substitute a smart skill with persuasion for a skill test oh okay so if what I'm is what I'm understanding here with this perk uh, cat chat chatter flashback is that um, if let's say if you want to try and persuade the guard and instead of using some kind of smart skill you can use your persuasion to uh, do the do the skill test instead of doing the smart skill. Okay, cool. That's that's uh, I I get that I get that, but I I really need to see how the whole thing goes. Okay, hang up. <clears throat> so hang hang ups are basically the uh, negatives, uh, like the what was it again? The flaws. Chatterbox. You suffer sung, uh, you suffer sung on in, <laughs> you suffer snags on infiltration skills, uh, infiltration skill test that involves stealth as you can never quite stay quiet enough, even talking to yourself if no one's around. Aha! Aha! So, um, even, okay, let's just say that even if your character here doesn't really talk maybe maybe he has a gag or maybe he's just m mute or something like that uh what this does is when you try to let's just say your character here is sneaking past a sleeping guard usually uh a character would just roll for stealth uh the gm would Decide the uh, DC. Uh, that's the difficult. Uh, it, what was it again? DC difficulty challenge, something like that. Uh, dif yeah, the difficulty check. I said uh, the, the GM will uh, set the DC to probably okay. The let's just say the idea. The idea is okay. The guard was partying all night and he didn't really get enough rest, so he's in this. Um, corridor and it's boring and he fell asleep uh, so the DC for this would be probably 10 that, that's just uh, acceptable right with your bonuses and whatnot so if a normal player would to roll stealth check uh, let's just say he gets a 5 but his skill to uh, stealth is 6 so that's an 11 so that's an automatic pass and then let's just say your other character is a rogue or whatnot or whatever it is. Their their skill point is high. Let's just say ten. So they roll a five. That's a fifteen. 
but because they have certain skill perks or whatever, uh, they have advantage on roll, so they roll twice, and he gets a 20, so basically he's a ninja. And there comes you, with the chatty perk. And as they say here, uh, you suffer snags on infiltration skill as that involves stealth as you can never quit quiet and blah blah blah. So what this says is, okay, let's just say your stealth is 5. You roll a, you roll a d20, you got a 10, that's a 15. That's good. But here's the thing, because of your hang up, the chatter box, you roll at disadvantage. That means you roll twice, but pick the lowest. So in this scenario here, you pick a 4. Sorry, uh, you roll a 4. With your 5, that's a 9. The DC was 10. So, somehow you manage to wake up the guard, <laughs> catching you and your party, blah 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 blah. So, it's it's kind of a very fun mechanic here for... Uh, for... how to put this? It's just a fun mechanic. This, this is really cool. Um, okay, so just the characteristics. You love sharing your gifts of the gap with anyone who cares to listen. Do you enjoy gossiping about other ponies? Or do you just enjoy making new friends and having long conversation for... Uh, sorry, long conversations for some ponies talking a lot is a nervous habit, while for others is just as uh, it's, mm, it's just a way to share things they they're interested with others think about the motivation of why your pony character is particularly chatty and how that comes into play in daily activities so uh this suggested characteristic here is very cool because making a character sometimes can be a bit difficult because you you don't really have the right idea or and whatnot and Basically, choosing a background, uh, it, it's it's one of those things where I I got no idea if this is right for me or not. Blah blah blah. But hey, uh, it's something, and the thing that they give here is pretty cool. Also, um, background bonds. So this this is just basically flavor for your character. So um, let's see, let's see, um, and what they say here is. You can pick from 1 to 12, or you can roll a 1d12 to pick uh, to let the die pick for you. So, I have a hard time keeping secrets. Oh no. I'm often afraid that people judge me for talking too much. I love gossip. The juicier the better. I always want some pony to spill the, uh, uh, sip, eh? spill the tea with me. I find myself constantly jumping from one topic to another. A great story told by friends is better than any book or product, uh, pro or production you'll see at Ponyville Theatre. Sometimes I feel that there are too many things to say and too little time to say it without leaving out something important. I often interrupt others, usually realizing I've done so way too late. Just because I'm a talker doesn't mean I'm good at I'm a good listener and I'm great at remembering details about conversation I had. Just because I'm a good talker doesn't mean I'm a good listener and I'm also great at remembering details about Ha! Huh. Okay. I once talked my way out of a very scary situation. My friends know that I uh, that if they ever need some pony to talk to, I'm always there, here for them. I get impatient with ponies who doesn't seem to pay attention to when I'm talking uh, when I'm talking about what I'm talking about. My nickname in school was Filibuster hmm, because I never met any I never let my teachers get through a sentence without interrupting with additional facts on the topics. Ah <laughs> okay cool. So, uh, if you're probably wondering, what are this all about? Isn't this the same thing as this? Technically, no. This is one of those character traits that you can put onto your character. So basically, let's just say, uh, 
Number 10. Let's just say you pick number 10. My friends know that if they ever need some pony to talk to, I'm always there for them. So basically what this says to you and to your GM is that uh, this is how you should kind of play your character, uh, make them uh, or try to give it, give them that, that tone of, uh, of parental, I won't say parental, but motherly love and so on, blah, blah, blah. So th this is one of those cases where, ah, this is really interesting. So we'll see how that goes, blah, blah, blah. So what I wanted to show you was this. Aha. This is a D&D character creator. Uh, it's called Aurora and you can build your character with this. It's a free app with certain things that you need to do, blah, 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 and yeah, basically you can do a, you, you can create a D &D character here. So um, let's just say we'll call him Tess, and depending on how that game runs, uh, it's going to be a bit different because uh, there's a few rules for D and D, and that's uh, point by. Basically, you have certain number stats for your character, and you can pick which one to slot it in. Uh, standard array is similar, but you have a set number of points, which is 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8, and you can slot it into uh, any of the uh, character's stats. Uh, Rule before uh, what this means is you just roll and discard the lowest so you get four chances uh, the d uh, 3d6 is the same thing and you just roll the die for your stats um, for us right now we're going to go for point by and uh, create a character this is just your what you call this uh, art which we can change later so we're creating tests and all of this here is just basically choosing your um, race and whatnot. So this is all the module that they came from, and this is all the race. Uh, this is the classes. We got artificer, uh, and why you're wondering? There's three because there's three uh, artificers have three uh, books they came from. I, I think so. Backgrounds, ability scores, language, proficiency, and feet. Um, let's go for a standard human character. Okay, go for a standard human character. Uh, they're explaining what uh, humans are here. Um, you can also check out the books if you want to. Okay, let's click that. Okay, so uh, what class you want to go for? So let's go for a fighter class. All right, that's the fighter. Ah, okay, sorry. So when you uh, when you pick a human, there's always the oh, what type of human are you going for? Uh, in the player's handbook, there's the human variant, which gives you two stuff. You know, um, let's say uh, two different ability score, which I uh, increase two by one, and then you get a Proficiency in one of your skills and also feet of your choice. And also there's the standard human array. Uh, I don't see it. Huh? What? Human variant, let's go for that one. All right, so you, you increase your stats and whatnot and so on. So, uh, the, so you just go in, you increase your stats here. Like I mentioned before, there's a few numbers you can do. Then you just build a character and stuff. Um, also the build, uh, if I can. Oh, uh, also the... Uh, let's see, manage. Yeah, your backstory. What was your backstory and whatnot. There's also the backgrounds. Yeah, the backgrounds. The backgrounds also play a part because uh, it gives you additional bonuses to stuff. Uh, like this one. Uh, gives you proficiency in athletics, perception, 
navigation tools and vehicles, land and water. Oh no, that's sailor. Yeah, okay. So soldier is uh, athletics, intimidation, game set, uh, vehicles, land. So uh, picking this is just basically how you want to build your character, and also like we mentioned before, or we what we read before, is <coughs> uh, basically this. So special uh, specialty or uh, bonds or whatever. I mean, it's basically the same thing as what we've. Oh no! It's basically the same thing as what we covered before in this. And yeah, cre creating characters is fun. Like creating the perfect character for you is fun. But one thing or one one rule I learned the hard way is to never be too attached to your character because uh, in the end, they might perish because bad roll of the die. Oh no, can't can't be helped. So yeah. I, I, I can't wait, but I, I wonder if I can play this with anyone, because the game looks fun. I am very interested in checking this one out and playing it with some people, because... Yeah, man, like, this is going to be fun. Especially playing a bit of D&D &D and trying something new, because wizards are big meanies. So yeah, so let's go into the next topic, and... Next topic is what have I been doing with my week? So if I remember right, last week we didn't have a show because news was not a lot. But this week we made up for it. And we did with a nice chat about d and I really love D&D. D&D &D or tabletop gaming is really fun. The idea of... How do I put this? D&D uh, &D is basically a tool for improv. Uh, improvisation where you just act and be silly be f uh, play play a role and whatnot like it is a very fun thing to do with your friends and I can understand for some people it's daunting that they have to talk or act or do some public thing in front of their friends but as time goes on you won't uh, that that won't even matter because you're playing a game with your friends basically your how do I put this your um how what's the word I'm looking for you're immersed in the character that you created and you want uh you 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 immerse yourself into the character and you want your character to do well and whatnot, and just, just do or just play um, the characters that you created, and you want to see how far or how awesome uh, you, uh, how awesome the character can be. Uh, what else? Yep, just D and D. Um, other than that, I recently bought a game. I I don't have it with me now, but I bought Zelda Tears of the Kingdom and this is a keychain that they gave awesomeness. Also the the shop that I went to they gave us this pendant and also uh, an upcoming keychain. I, I think it's the tablet that Link has, something like that. So um been Playing a bit of that, and also another game called Shadow of Doubt, where you play as a detective and you solve cases. It's fun, but I'm not that smart, so I, I just played about, what, almost 10 hours of it, and then like I, I dropped off because I want to play Zelda. <laughs> so yeah, um, that, that's, that's, that, that's it for what I've been doing. Uh, play the Played D and D last week, but not this week because my GM had to work, or played Zelda probably. Uh, but yeah, uh, that, that's about it. Um, yeah, that's about it. So anyway, um, I'm very interested in this pony role playing game. Like I am, I am very hooked on the idea of trying this out with friends. Huh. 
Oh well, anywho, um, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at theambitionsgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter, the show's Twitter account is at MPS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Uh, also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube, don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date, and also Stitcher Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on punivlive.com, links are in the show notes. Also, do subscribe to the Review and Discussion Podcast on iTunes and Stitch Radio. Over there, you can catch me, Silver Quill, Jacob, probably Tara when he's available, reviewing the Pony comics, episodes, movies, specials, and sometimes we like to do other things than um, ponies, and that can be cartoons, animes, comics, mangas, movies, games, or just general discussion about whatever you want. If you would like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash mbs show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Uh, talking about the thank yous, where are you? Uh, I would like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, and Mr. of Like. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya!